All right, folks, today we're going to take a look at a battery from a brand called Vaderer. I did want to say before we get started that I was contacted by Vaderer and they asked if I would do a review of this product. I said yes, because I love testing batteries. So they sent this battery to me free of charge in exchange for this video review. If you're the type of person who is triggered by sponsored videos on YouTube, I suggest you go watch some cat videos. All right, now that we've covered that, let's take a look at this battery. And you can see over here that it is a lithium iron phosphate uh, four battery. It's 12 volts and it is 100 amp hours. So it's got some significant energy in here. It has a couple of different icons on here that mean different things. Don't get it wet. Don't light it on fire. Uh, read the instruction manual, recycle the battery at the end of its life and don't throw it in the trash. It does come with low temperature cutoff protection for charging and discharging. And we'll take a look at that when we go through the product manual. Uh, there's a caution here. Please ensure that your charger is a lithium iron phosphate compatible uh, for use. And that's a good piece of advice. The model number is LMI 2100. It tells you do not disassemble, crush, puncture, incinerate, incinerate uh, the battery. Don't, uh, you don't short circuit the uh, external contacts or expose the battery to temperatures about 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Here is the website for Vader or Power, and there'll be a link below along with a coupon code. And then here's an email address in case you have any questions. You can either post them below or you can contact brand at Vader or Power. Uh, it's got a couple of different uh, logos for certification bodies here, and I'm not exactly sure what that means. I want to take a look at the top of the battery. So let me go ahead and flip this battery up, and it is about 25 pounds. It has a nice nylon webbing carrying handle that works just fine. Our terminals uh, come with these little plastic protectors, and if your battery's in storage, I would suggest that you use them. These prevent damage to your terminals, and they also prevent something metal maybe perhaps accidentally falling across them and causing a short circuit uh, situation. Here's some more information about the battery, the model, the type, the energy, uh, the charge voltage. Uh, here it has 12.8 volts on the front of the battery. It's at 12 volt. They're referred to as a 12 volt battery, but the nominal voltage is 12.8. Uh, here's your charge voltage and your max charge current and your max discharge current. And I wouldn't really charge this at 100 amp hours. In the manual, we'll see that it recommends charging at 0.2C or 20%, which would be around 20 amps. Um, and then your max discharge current, uh, you can do it 100, but uh, I never run anything at 100%, so I typically would be doing a little bit less than that. Now, we are going to push this battery a little bit when we do some tests with our inverter later in the video. That said, let's uh, go ahead and get started with the capac... Oh, real quick, I did want to mention that it comes with some other goodies, and uh, let me get these out real quick. It comes with some documentation, and we're going to look at the documentation separately. But I did want to show that it did come with some terminal lugs here, these bolts with a washer and a lock washer. M8 is the designation for these. And then it comes with these plastic protective covers. So what I would do is, is that when you have these connected and you're using your battery, you just put these on top and that gives you a little bit of protection from damage or short circuiting. Now let's go ahead and get started with the capacity test. Okay, so for this capacity test, what we've done is, is we've taken some 10 gauge wire and we've connected it to the positive and negative terminals. This is stranded copper wire. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna feed this wire into the CBA4. This is a computerized battery analyzer from West Mountain Radio and it works fantastic for this particular use case. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect this up via these power pole connectors. And then the CBA connects via USB to our computer. With the CBA, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a drain or a current draw off of the battery at 10 amps per hour. Now that's called a 0.1C test because it's 0.1 of capacity, which is 10% of capacity. We have a 100 amp hour battery. We're gonna drain into 10 amps. The test should take 10 hours to run. A lot of times these tests are done at 0.2C, which would be 20 amps in our particular use case. I don't do that because sometimes the CBA gets a little bit hot and we should get accurate or close to accurate results at the 1C draw test. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect this to the computer and I'm gonna come back from the software standpoint and then you can see how we configured the test. Okay, so here you can see the test parameter screen that we have. And the first thing I'm gonna do is come up here on the upper right-hand side, I'm gonna hit detect and it's detecting our voltage at 14.4. 
I just took this off the battery charger, and for the charger, we use the NOCO Genius 10. And I had this charge in four, I don't know, about 13, 14 hours, something along those lines. It's detecting four cells in a capacity I entered in here at 100 amp hours. In the center of the screen, you can see our discharge test. We're going to have a cutoff voltage at 10 volts. Now, the battery has a BMS in there, and it may cut off before then, but we're going to run this until we can't charge any more up until 10 volts. Uh, our draw right here at our test amps is set for 10, and our graph is going to be in amps over hours. So I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to hit the Start button, and then the test is going to start. Now, as I mentioned, this test is going to take around 10 hours to run. But you can see over here that we're starting to apply in a load, and it drops down below 14 volts with the load applied, which is very typical for these types of batteries. We're going to expect a pretty flat discharge rate until we get closer to 10 volts. I'll be back later, and we'll see how the battery performs. All right, folks, so here are our test results, and they look pretty good. As you can see, we dropped down to just below 13 uh, volts at the beginning of the test and we held a relatively flat line uh, at around 100 amps of discharge right here we were at around 11.7 volts now what I want to do is I want to attempt to magnify my mouse over here what you can see are the test specifications and right now it's saying the battery is at 11.8 volts but that's after the test there's no load on it so we ran the test down to 10 volts 10, um, 10 volts was our low voltage cutoff. At 10 amps, we ran for 619 minutes, which is about 10 hours and 20 minutes. We had 1,311 watt hours. The rating on the battery is 1,280. And then out of the battery, we got 103.242 amp hours, and the rating is 100 amp hours. So that would be a pass if you ask me. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the documentation that comes with the battery. And the first thing you have here is a warranty policy card. And if you take a look at it, it says they provide a five-year warranty for all batteries when used correctly in accordance with the manual instructions. And they talk a little bit about uh, contacting customer support and some of the things that they may assist you in testing or trying out if there's a problem with the battery. There's some information that you fill out on the back, and I would encourage everybody to do this, and I would save this with your instruction manual and a copy of the receipt for your purchase of the battery. Just taking a look, it uh, says Vaderer, I think is how you say that, uh, low temp cutoff protect protection, charge and discharge, uh, and then they have the specifications, 100 amp hours or 200 amp hours, so this instruction manual is for two different batteries. So let's just flip through this quickly. Here are the main specifications, and I'm going to hold this up so we can see it. Um, it has the battery voltage at 12.8 uh, volts nominal, which shows 100 amp hours, and the charge voltage is 14.2 to 14.6 volts. The weight uh, in American is 24.2 pounds with uh, 1,280 watt hours. Your max uh, continuous charging current is 100 amp hours. I wouldn't do that. And it says max continuous uh, discharge current is 100 amps. I would not do that either. Um, I don't like running any of my equipment at full capacity. It says your recommended charge current is 20 amps or 0.2C. I'm going to roll in a picture right now. I use the NOCO Genius 2 battery charger to charge my batteries, um, and it charges at 10 amps or 0.1C. It works well for me, and I've used it for a long time, and I'm going to continue to use it. It talks about the max load on an inverter, which is 1,000 uh, 280 watts. We're going to hook the battery up to an inverter and do some testing there. And then we have some operating temperatures for charge, discharge, and storage. One of the things I wanted to point out is down here, you see there is low temp cutoff protection for charging. That happens at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, plus or minus 4 degrees Celsius, which would go up to 39.2 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. And then it has discharge protection as well. So this is when you're using the battery, and it has low temp cutoff protection for that. Um, and it says that it is negative 4 degrees Fahrenheit uh, to plus or minus. It says 39.2 degrees Fahrenheit, but I think that might be a little bit of a typo. 
Here when you see it says uh, low temp cutoff protection is negative 20 degrees Celsius plus or minus 4 degrees Celsius. I think the second part of this Fahrenheit equation might be wrong. Uh, anyhow, in this case, I'm unable to test that, so I'm not going to test the low temp cutoff protection uh, for discharging. Um, we'll see about temp the, the, the charging. The next thing we have on here is waterproof class IP65 terminal type M8 screws. It comes with two screws and two screw or two bolts and two bolt protectors. Dimensions are 12.95 inches wide, uh, 6.77 inches uh, deep, and 8.2 8.42 inches tall. Ooh, that was a whole lot more information about the warranty policy. We're not going to go through that. Here's the different charging methods. You can use a lithium iron phosphate charger, solar panels, or you can actually use an inverter, but the inverter does need to have built in AC to DC charging function. And there's a table here that shows your percent of capacity based off of the voltage. There's some information about long-term storage, which is great. And then information about connecting the batteries in series or parallel. It's always fantastic when a manual includes that information. Information about the battery's BMS and should the BMS trip, it gives you information about how to recover your BMS. And then it covers some information about the charging and discharging curves based off of temperature and other things along those lines. All in all, it's a really well done manual. Uh, it's uh, better than some of the ones that uh, we've seen on other batteries. So big props to Vaderer for that. Okay, so here we have the Vaderer battery, and it is connected via these large cables to my pure sine wave inverter. We have one clamp-on meter measuring the amp draw from the battery, and then we have another one monitoring the voltage of the battery. We're also using the Kumin watt meter to show the watt output of the inverter, not the watt output of the battery because some watts are lost in the inverter itself. Turning on the Harbor Freight heat gun, you can see we're drawing about seven, sorry, 600 watts and about 58 amps from the battery. Turning it on high, we go over the 100 amp threshold to about 120, 121. And you can see the output from the inverter is over 1200 watts. We do see a little bit of sag on the battery voltage, but that's to be expected with a load like this. What I'm gonna do now is come back with the small space heater and we're gonna put additional load on the battery. Okay, here we are turning this space heater on and we're setting it for a temperature of 77 degrees and we're going to see the amp draw continue to creep up. We are right around 45 amps and now we are at 50 and that's going to continue to rise. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add to that load. Now it's not going to come through the Kumin watt meter because we have the heat gun plugged directly into the inverter, but you will see it reflected on the clamp meter and here we go and right around 155 amps being pulled from the battery. Keep in mind the battery is rated for 100 amps, so we can go beyond that for a little bit. I'm gonna turn the heat gun on high and see what happens. And when I do that, the inverter fails, so we're not gonna be able to do that. Let me reset the inverter, and then we'll turn everything back on, and we will go back to our 155 amp draw. There we go. It's going to settle somewhere around 155, I imagine. And you can see from here that the uh, battery can handle this load, uh, so you should have no problem at 100 amps. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, I would never run anything at 100% of rated capacity. Anyhow, thanks for watching, everybody. Greatly appreciated. And thanks to Vader for sending this battery to me for my consideration.